A lot of people are up in arms on that. An autopsy is scheduled today to identify a woman's body that was found in Reno, Nevada on Friday. There is a possibility that it could be missing college student Brianna Dennison. This is the field where they found that body and was on the edge of the campus of the University of Nevada. That's less than 10 miles from the house where Dennison was last seen. In the winter of 2008, a young woman named Brianna Zunino Dennison vanished without a trace. She was a vibrant 19-year-old college student with a bright future ahead of her. But her disappearance would send shockwaves through the community and ignite a relentless search for answers. As news spread of Brianna's disappearance, an army of volunteers, law enforcement agencies, and concerned citizens rallied together, determined to bring her home safely. Brianna's family and friends, gripped by fear and uncertainty, clung to hope while sharing stories of her infectious laughter, unwavering spirit, and love for life. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months, as the search intensified. The quest for answers led investigators down a dark and twisted path that would uncover a heinous series of crimes. Law enforcement tirelessly pursued leads, meticulously piecing together the puzzle surrounding Brianna's disappearance. Their dedication and determination were unwavering in their pursuit of justice. This is the story of Brianna Zunino Dennison, a young woman whose light was tragically extinguished, but whose memory continues to shine. Brianna Zunino Dennison was born on March 29, 1988, to Jeff Dennison and Bridget Dennison. She was lovingly known by her mother as Breezy because she reminded her of a breath of fresh air on a cool summer day. When she was six years old, her father passed away and it was really hard on the family like any passing of a loved one is but she persevered through the pain with her other loved ones. She spent her childhood in Reno, Nevada, and her mother's native town of Mendocino, California. Brianna's passion for traveling and world cultures took her to Hawaii, New York, Mexico, Jamaica, Japan, Italy, Egypt, Hungary, Austria, and France. She studied abroad in Rome, Italy for a year with her family. Her ability to connect with people from all walks of life became part of her radiant personality. Brianna was raised in the tradition of honoring children as our most precious possessions. Brianna's relatives and close friends instilled in her the merits of being a loving, spiritual, respectful, and trusting human being. She loved children and animals, especially her dog, Ozzy. Brianna graduated from Reno High School in 2006. She was a sophomore at Santa Barbara City College, majoring in child psychology. On January 20, 2008, Brianna returned home to Reno from sunny Santa Barbara during winter break to see some friends and family. She and her friends had attended events tied to Summer Winter Action Tours LLC, which was a travel agency that catered to students, and the Martin Luther King Jr. Gala weekend event in Reno which she had reportedly attended this event in the past. On that particular day, she returned home. She was last seen alive at about 4 a.m. Pacific time at her friend's house near the University of Nevada campus. This residence is on McKay Court in Reno, where she went to sleep after attending a party at the Sands Regency on North Arlington Avenue. When her friend woke up the next morning at around 9 a.m., Brianna was nowhere to be found. A small bloodstain was spotted on the pillow Brianna slept on that night. Her cell phone, purse, and shoes were all left at the house, which led her friend to alert Brianna's parents and local authorities. When investigators arrived, they assessed the scene. In the following days, the detectives conducted a forensic investigation of the McKay Court residence where Brianna was staying when she was abducted, and they found touch DNA on a doorknob that belonged to an unidentified male. The investigators were able to confirm that the blood on the pillow belonged to Brianna and began focusing on a kidnapping scenario. The detectives began sweeping the University of Nevada, Reno area in search of Brianna and also the Federal Bureau of Investigation. FBI joined in the search efforts. 
The DNA that was discovered on the doorknob the night when Brianna disappeared was linked to at least two sexually motivated attacks in the same area in previous months, one on November 13 and the second on December 16, 2007. On January 29, 2008, a Reno woman claimed she knew another victim who revealed she was raped at gunpoint in a garage on the University of Nevada. Reno campus in October 2007 but had not reported the crime although it was deemed a positive connection. The investigators released a description of the potential suspected perpetrator based on identifiers used by women who had been sexually assaulted by the suspect. To track down the perpetrator, the detectives began interviewing nearly 100 registered sex offenders who live within a mile of the McKay court home but none seemed to be responsible for Brianna's disappearance. Around 1,700 people including Nevada's then First Lady Don Gibbons, wife of then-Governor Jim Gibbons, volunteered to participate in a physical search of a 100-square-mile to find Brianna who went missing but to no avail. On February 15, 2008, a man by the name of Albert Jimenez in Reno was just returning from his lunch break at a Subway restaurant and as he was walking by the road, he noticed bright orange-colored fabric standing out among a pile of discarded tree limbs lying in a ditch near a Reno business park. When he approached closer, he discovered neon orange socks which were attached to feet. What at first he thought was a mannequin which turned out to be a deceased woman. Jimenez had heard about Brianna Dennison's kidnapping but didn't think the victim resembled photographs he'd seen on billboards. Jimenez didn't have a cell phone. So he quickly returned to his place of employment, EE Technologies, to call the Reno police. When police arrived at the South Reno lot, Jimenez was told that the victim was Brianna Dennison after an autopsy report confirmed that the body found in a field near a Reno business park was hers. Brianna had been assaulted and murdered. A clothing item of underwear was also found near Brianna's body along with the DNA of the perpetrator and the DNA of an unknown female. The police believed that the clothing item did not belong to Brianna and that it might have been left near her body to taunt the investigators. The police then asked anyone who recognized the clothing item as theirs to come forward as they might know the identity of the perpetrator but no one came out. On Tuesday, November 25, 2008, 27-year-old James Michael Bila, of Sparks, Nevada, was arrested and booked at the Washoe County Jail on charges of murder, first-degree kidnapping, and sexual assault. Bila was arrested while he was dropping his son off at the Stepping Stones Children's Center in Reno. Bila had already given the police a DNA sample collected from a doorknob initially in Brianna's friend's house and the detectives discovered he was a former Marine and he had previously been arrested in 2001 for threatening his former girlfriend's neighbor with a knife. On Wednesday, November 26, 2008, during a press conference held by the Reno Police Department, it was confirmed that the DNA collected from Bila matched the DNA found at the crime scene, positively linking him to the murder of Brianna Dennison and a previous sexual assault. In the press conference, it was also revealed that a friend of his girlfriend had turned in Bila via the secret witness program on November 1, 2008, after Bila's girlfriend had confided to this friend that she had found underwear unknown to her in Bila's truck as they were coming back from Washington State, where Bila had taken a job in March 2008. News media reports of Brianna's case including a police sketch of the suspect and a description of a vehicle used in another rape the month before Brianna's abduction began circulating. Bila was questioned by detectives about his atrocity after the secret witness tip came in but he denied his involvement and declined to provide a DNA sample. Bila's girlfriend was also questioned and gave police permission to obtain DNA from her four-year-old son, whom Bila had fathered. The test confirmed that his direct relative, Bila in this case, had left a DNA sample collected at the home where Brianna Dennison was abducted and at the other rape that had taken place the prior month. On his way to Washington, it was also revealed that Bila had sold his truck in Idaho, which matched the description of the vehicle used in the previous sexual assault. At the press conference, 
Officials mentioned that the vehicle was being returned to Reno to be searched and used as evidence in the case against him. On Thursday, May 27, 2010, Bila was found guilty of the murder of Brianna Dennison and after deliberating for about nine hours, the jury returned a guilty verdict for all counts against Bila, which included kidnapping, sexual assault, and murder. The defense attorneys argued against the death penalty, stating that Bila suffered an abusive childhood due to an alcoholic father, that he had been a productive member of society before his crimes, and that he was a model prisoner. However, the jurors did not accept these mitigating factors and handed out the death sentence. On July 30, 2010, Bila was sentenced to four additional life sentences for multiple counts of rape and kidnapping associated with attacks on two victims before Brianna's abduction and murder, and over the years, Bila's appeals have been denied. The story of Brianna Zunino Dennison is one of resilience, heartbreak, and the unyielding pursuit of justice. Brianna's family, who faced unimaginable pain and uncertainty, stood strong in their fight for justice. Their unwavering determination became a beacon of hope for others facing similar tragedies. The legacy of Brianna's story reaches far beyond her case. It has sparked crucial conversations, inspired community initiatives, and brought awareness to the issues of violence and safety. Law enforcement's tireless efforts ultimately led to the apprehension and conviction of the individual responsible for Brianna's abduction and murder. Their dedication and unwavering commitment to finding justice showcase the power of teamwork and determination. As we remember Brianna, we hold on to the memories of her vibrant spirit, her love for life, and the impact she had on those who knew her. Her story serves as a reminder of the importance of community, compassion, and standing up against violence. In the end, Brianna Zunino Dennison's legacy will live on not only through the love of her family and friends but through the collective efforts to create a safer world for others. May her memory continue to inspire change and hope. Rest in peace, Brianna Zunino Dennison.